Olivia here from JM Squared Vintage. Welcome back to the channel. I hope everybody in the States had an excellent holiday weekend, the official kickoff to summer, Memorial Day. I can't believe it's already here. It feels like just two weeks ago it was Christmas. But I am here today with the ship with me. These are all orders that came through over the weekend. Some really cool and interesting things. Some cool vintage pieces, some interesting high-end pieces, some bolo brands I'm excited to talk about. I just can't wait to show you kind of what sold, how long it took, and really invite you into this side of the process of it for me. Guys, some really like fast sales too. Just all around a really interesting weekend of sales. But guys, if you are new here, first and foremost, welcome. I'm Julia. That is my name. We talk all things thrifting and vintage and reselling on the internet here. If that sounds like something that you are into, consider hitting subscribe down below. I would love to have you along on this journey. But without further ado, guys, surprising to nobody, I am running late, so we've got a lot to do. I've got to get these things packed and over to the post office ASAP. So sit back, relax, and let's get into the shipments. So the first piece up here is this adorable dress from Lilyful, and this is actually going to one of you guys, so that always makes me so excited. This is just a perfect little satiny leopard print midi dress, and I gotta say, like, I will die on the hill that leopard is absolutely positively a neutral. It goes with everything, it goes with bright colors, it goes with black, it's chic, it's forever in style, but I think that this is like a perfect leopard color like leopard or cheetah whatever you want to call it there's so many different variations and i feel like so many of them are very yellow which is a harder color to wear than brown and this is just a perfect like dark leopard print and i think it is just so chic and this is just one of those silhouettes that will always be in style despite the fact that animal print is obviously having a moment right now like something like this can always be pulled out. You can throw whatever the topper piece of the moment happens to be on top of it, a leather jacket, a blazer, a denim coat, whatever, and it'll be a full and stylish outfit. So I love this. I've actually never picked up Lilyful before. I don't know if I'll pick up like everything I see from them, but I just thought that, the, I don't even think it mattered what brand it was. This was just like a really great piece that I would have picked up pretty much from any brand. So very excited to have found that. This guy listed for $32. That was about kind of what I was seeing sold comps for Lilyful going. It popped through as a full price sale. It sold same day. And with the $1 cost of the bins, this brought my profit to $24.60. And I hope you love it. This is just such a cute little dress. Such a forever little staple piece. Next up, now this is a cute little boho shirt that I have from J. Jill. To be totally honest, this ended up taking a little bit longer to sell than anticipated. J. Jill usually sells fast for me. I'm gonna see if I can zoom in on that embroidery. This is just beautiful and it's viscose, so it's semi-sheer. Beautiful little boho silhouette with a split tie. And it took six months to sell this. And I have a sneaking suspicion that that is because it didn't photograph well. This is just one of those shirts that looks better in person than it does in pictures. And I am not a professional photographer. I do my best with the pictures, but no matter what, it's never gonna look as good as it looks styled on a model <laughs> being taken by photographers who make lots and lots of money to do what they do. So I just thought this was really pretty, so I grabbed it. It's J. Jill, people love J. Jill. I knew it would go eventually, but this did take quite a bit longer to sell than anticipated, but that's okay. That is the nature of this business. So I had this one for about eight months and I had it listed for $32 and I got a like on it and my sidekick sent an offer for $28, which was accepted. And with a $1 cost of the bins, this brought my profit to $21.40. I'm happy to be moving this one on. Uh, it is a really pretty shirt. So I hope she loves it and I'm happy to be getting that a new home. Next up here, this was such a great find. This is a beautiful little high neck dress from Amanda Uprichard. And it's got this like high, almost turtleneck. It's like loose, but then the sleeves kind of cut in. So it gives that kind of like shoulder framing that's great. This is the newer label of Amanda Uprichard. I'm gonna see if I can zoom in on that a little bit. So that's kind of what you wanna look for. The older label is kind of like a stylized AR. But this is a midi length dress. It's slinky, it's cut on the bias, it has a slit up one leg, and it's just one of those like perfect little black dresses. 
And because it's cut on the bias, it's just going to be super flattering to pretty much any body type. It's just like my biggest tip that I give to people because people see that term cut on the bias and they don't necessarily know what it means. But we can get into the technical piece of what cut on the bias means and I've spoken to this quite a bit on the channel. What you need to know about it is that it will kind of stretch even if the fabric is a rigid fabric because it's cut diagonally it will kind of stretch to accommodate curves. So if you are somebody who is curvy, you've got a big bust, you've got some hips, you've got a booty, whatever the case may be, whatever you're working with, or likewise, if you're a straighter body type, because that's that's the opposite side of the thing. You know, you can get something that's a rigid fabric and it's cut for somebody with hips. If you don't have hips, it's going to make you look like you're trying to dress up in your mom's clothes, whereas this will kind of shrink down, it'll slink down. This is kind of like where the word slinky comes from. It like slinks to fit every kind of curve. So it's just a really friendly cut that is fantastic because none of our bodies are the same. Nobody's body is shaped the same way as another person's. So this just allows something to fit a lot of different body types beautifully and flatter all of them. So that's a win in my book. Anyway, I love Amanda Uprichard. She sold at Revolve. I think she sold at Saks, pretty high end. This was probably a good 300 or so dollar dress when it was sold initially. I believe it is also like still in line. It's still for sale. This is called the Chesterfield dress. I will, I'll write the name of what this is called down below. So you can go and look at it if you want to see a better picture of it. But I had this listed for $90. I had it listed for one month. I got an offer for $68. And with the $1 cost of the bins, this brought my profit to $53.40. Amanda Uprichard is definitely a bolo brand, especially if you can find these kind of classic little black dresses. They just, it's a fabulous dress. She'll have that in her closet, hopefully forever. Next up here, this is such a great little closet staple. This is a little t-shirt from James Purse. I'm oh, sorry, this is standard James Purse, which is kind of like the t-shirt line. I will pick up anything James Purse or standard James Purse, everything I've ever picked up from them. Sells really quickly. They have, I don't want to call it a cult following. It's just an ultra high-end basics company. They make t-shirts undershirts, sweaters. They also make some of the best sheets in the world that are like, to be clear, we, I've talked about sheets before. They're amazing sheets. They're also like four or $500. So anyway, I will pick up any James Purse piece that I find in good condition and I will pay up for it. This is a basic like red undershirt, little V-neck t-shirt. And I had it listed for $29 and I knew I would get pretty close to that. That's about what sold comps go for. If it's anything more substantial than this, you're looking at $30 and up. They just really use the best textile. So it's, it's always a safe bet. It's very classic. It's not trendy at all. Like you're never going to find a trend piece from James Purse. It's always going to be that great, like closet staple t-shirt, black crew neck sweater, whatever the case may be. Just things that are like truly, truly the definition of timeless. So I had this listed for $29 and I got an offer for $26 after one week. And with a $1 cost of the bins, this brought my profit to $22 even. So always pumped to get a James first piece. Like anytime it's always a little like tingle of excitement. I always think about like, you know, the things that I keep in my closet forever and ever and ever are those like great basic pieces. Like I have a black t-shirt and a white t-shirt from Lululemon that have been in my closet for like, I gotta be close to eight or nine years. They get worn like once a week. It's a basic black and white t-shirt. And I can't imagine other than maybe like extreme weight change. Like I can't imagine a reason that I would ever like donate them unless they literally fell apart. And at that point I would probably turn them into rags because I know that the fabric is so nice that it'll last a long time as a rag. Anyway, next up here. Now this was such a cute little find. And I found this kind of at the end of winter and I'm really pleased to be selling it right now. This is a cute little quilted moto style jacket. This is kind of like a sweatshirt and it's got this like jacquard looking quilting throughout. Hopefully I can get up close to this so you can see it. And it's got like a sweater style collar. It's really pretty. And this is from the brand Saturday Sunday. 
which is a, a sub-brand of Anthropology and one of my favorite sub-brands of Anthropology. I think that they're still sold through them, but just everything I have from them has sold through pretty quickly. And I just, I like their designs. It's very, it, it feels very Anthropology in like the chorist of the sense. So Saturday, Sunday, definitely a label to be on the lookout for. If you've ever found pieces from them, let me know. I'm interested to see, because I feel like I get a lot of comments from people saying that they've never heard of Saturday, Sunday before, and I've just really loved every piece that I've found. So this is definitely, to me, when I look at it, this is like a fall piece. You know, this feels fall, it's a fall color, it's a fall weight jacket, and I love that I'm moving this in May. It for $36, and my sidekick sent an offer for 32, which was accepted after about two months. So I paid a dollar for this at the bins, and at $32, with $1 cost of the bins, my profit on this ended up being $22.58. Again, super pleased to be moving this. I knew that this would move come fall. Definitely happy to be moving it a little bit earlier than that. Next up, now this was kind of a crazy one, and this is not something that like everybody would pick up. So I found this, and I knew kind of what I was looking at. In Japan, there is this culture called Lolita. It's one of their subcultures, and they dress in these kind of novelty style dresses they're always kind of bright colors this right here this kind of like bow and lace detail is kind of like a trademark of that lolita style and if you look at the bottom here these are all my little ponies like little unicorns all along the bottom and from what i understand these are all kind of made from really small businesses like this isn't something that you're going to get like a target making you know like it's it doesn't have big enough demand. So you get these tiny, small companies making them and they make them in very limited quantities. So if you like one of these dresses that you've seen, you have to kind of find it. <laughs> you know, it's not the easiest thing in the world to find. They also usually come with matching socks. That's kind of part of the whole shtick. They wear these kind of dresses and then they have little socks that are, have like little lace details around the edge probably similar to what you would wear as a little kid if you were dressing up for somebody's wedding or something. But either way, this was an exciting find to find in the bins. It's just, it's not something that everybody's gonna pick up, but it is something that I know a little bit about and I was excited to find because they do go for a pretty great price. This probably sold initially for like $150. Again, these are very small companies usually making these. If not somebody like hand making these, I don't think that this was handmade, but um, you will find these things that are like clearly made in somebody's like workshop that's you know taking 10 hours to make each dress. But this probably sold for about 150 bucks new and sold comps for similar dresses went in between like 50 and like $300, no lie. Like it's a very, very active subculture and it's just something I always keep my eyes out for because it is on my radar. So I had this listed for $60 and I had it listed for about a month. And I went back and forth with the girl and ended up taking an offer for 45, which I was super pleased to do. I got this at the bins for a dollar, and within a month I had gotten that offer with a one dollar cost of the bins. This brought my profit to $44. Let me know, guys. Have any of you ever found a Lolita style dress while you're sourcing? Is this something that you guys do? Is this something that you are like aware of? I'm really interested to know how many other people have kind of picked stuff like this. I always keep my eyes out for like mod cloth dresses or unique vintage dresses, those kind of like vintage rockabilly style. This is like the one notch deeper of that right like it's even more niche but because it's even more niche there's just less out there so i don't know let me know down below i'm very very interested to hear if any of you guys have ever found something like this sold something like this or bought anything like this next up now this was a dress i knew that wasn't gonna last long this is such a pretty little anthropology dress this is from the brand floria and it's funny when i was shopping and i found this <laughs> I knew exactly, like this was 100% 2010s anthropology. The quality is beautiful. It's this like lightweight cotton lawn. It's fully lined. I just love the detailing there around the neckline. And if you look on the back, it's also got the details with little white buttons. I just knew this was gonna be a quick sale. It's funny because I don't pick up a lot of stuff from the 2010s because it doesn't really sell all that well. 
But stuff like this from Anthropology is a pretty safe bet. And you know, I would use the litmus test of like, does it look vintage? Does it have that vintage inspired look to it? And if it does, I'll tell you right now, it's probably a pretty safe bet. Like I always think about mod cloth. We just talked about mod cloth and mod cloth, you know, has always done this kind of vintage style dress, you know, the kind of rockabilly style, the retro pinup, whatever. Well, for a while there, anthropology, that's kind of what they were doing, but they were doing it on a higher end basis. So like where you would be able to get a beautiful like retro style dress for mod cloth for whatever, $60, $70 in 2010, you would be able to find like the higher end version of that, like something that's made in all cotton or something that's made in silk or something, you know, whatever it is, like in kind of like an elevated fabrication. That's kind of what anthropology did for a while before it kind of leaned a little bit more into like the elder boho. So, you know, Zoe Deschanel. If you can think about what Zoe Deschanel used to wear back in the 2010s, use that as a litmus test for what to pick up from anthropology. She wore a ton of stuff from anthropology. I literally had two of the same dresses that she had. One was this great cotton eyelet, but the eyelet was tennis rackets. I can't, I sold that off. That was one of the first things I sold on Poshmark and I still regret it to this day, despite the fact that there's not a prayer that that would have fit me, <laughs> but I loved that dress. But use that litmus test because that is definitely something that'll get you to like things you know you can sell, resell easily. That is absolutely an easy way to tell if what you are looking at from anthropology in the 2010s is going to be an easy and quick sell. So I have this listed for $34 for two days and I got an offer for $30, which I did accept with the $1 cost of the bins. This brought me to a $23 profit. I hope she absolutely loves it. That dress is so cute. I wish that fit me because I would 100% wear that dress today. All right, so next up here, we've got this cute dress from Young, Fabulous, and Broke. This is called, I think it's called like the Tiger Lily tie-dye dress, whatever it is. It's a midi length kind of caftan style dress and sold comps on this in like new condition were pretty high, like in the 60s to 70s. Now this unfortunately had a couple little spots of like, I think they were like dried paint, unfortunately. And I did my best to get them out. I washed it a couple times, gave it a nice air dry. So I, I was able to fade them a little bit, but I did unfortunately have to sell this as flawed. But either way, this is just a really great dress to keep your eyes out for. This is double gauze. And it is beautiful quality. Young, Fabulous, and Broke stuff is really, really nice quality. Oh, guys, I was just thinking about something the other day. I feel like I just saw, did the Millionaire Matchmaker come back? I'm, I'm bringing us back to like Y2K right now. Do you remember the Millionaire Matchmaker uh, with Patty Stanger? Oh, the trash TV of my day. I remember every time I hear Young, Fabulous, and Broke, because I, I, I think I only watched like three or four episodes of it, but one of the clients that Patty Stanger worked with was the founder of Young, Fabulous, and Broke. And I remember when I started to source like intentionally, this wasn't something that I had necessarily like kept an eye on over the years or bought for myself, but I think I found the first Young, Fabulous, and Broke piece and I'm like, oh my God, I completely, remember that girl and if memory serves me right she was a she seemed to be a pretty sweet lady so that makes me happy i can definitely say that throughout the time that i've been sourcing intentionally i found quite a bit of young fabulous and broke stuff and the quality is always like top notch so i had this guy listed for 35 dollars again if it was flawless or if it was new with the tags this probably would have been closer to 50 or 60. Got an offer for $25 within one month and with a $1 cost of the bins, this brought my profit to $19 even. I hope she loves it. I mean, it does have a couple little paint specks on it, but they're like not in super conspicuous places. And it's 100% like, I always try to use like, would I wear it as the litmus test? And 100%, I would still wear that. So next up here is this super cool vintage printed silk shirt from the limited. I want to say that this is probably late eighties to early nineties, just going by the print. It is in great shape, great vintage shape, of course. Size small, hundred percent silk, but this is the kind of stuff that I love picking up. This is, I mean, we can find our bread and butter stuff all the time. We can find our kind of hot ticket items or bolo brands, but I absolutely love finding these like truly 
probably at this point in time, one of a kind pieces. The person who's gonna buy something like this is looking for something that truly nobody else will have. It's an unexpected fashion moment and I always love picking them up and I, I love finding them and I love selling them. So this is the kind of stuff that makes me really happy. But I will always pick up vintage printed silk as long as it's in good shape. You know, you always wanna, I always say like, if you are outsourcing and you find something like that, if you wanna check it for moth holes, the easiest way to do it is to hold it up to a light or hold it up to a window because those moth holes will show themselves to you real quick. But this was in great shape. This was absolutely in great shape considering the fact that it's, what, 35 years old at this point. So I had this guy listed for $32. And within three weeks, I got an offer for $25, which I did accept with a $1 cost of the bins. This brought my profit to $17.46. Super happy about that. Love getting the beautiful, like completely unique pieces out the door. Next up here, this is something that I will only pick right about now, right? These are Madewell jean shorts. I think this is the literally called the perfect jean short. They were a size 29, so it's a good size from them. They're in great shape. They're like a perfect cutoff, a nice mid-tone wash. They really don't feel like they've been worn much at all. Like they still have the little <laughs> string loops here where they had the little card fold over in store. But these kind of like perfect cutoff shorts are always a good bet as long as you're picking up at the right time. Like I'll pick these up between like March and maybe early July. And then after that, I won't touch shorts again unless I find something really, really special, which does happen all the time. This is California. There are great shorts to be found here all year round. But in general, like I'm not gonna pick up bread and butter style jean shorts. Over the winter, I will probably sell off a few more pairs that I have left over from the summer. So these guys I had for just one week, I had listed for $32. And my sidekick sent an offer, and we ended up going back and forth a little bit on offers, but we landed on $20, which I ultimately accepted. And with a $1 cost from the bins, this brought my profit to $14 even. So great little pair of shorts and definitely something to be on the lookout for like right now. I know a lot of people do really well with the Levi's, like the 501 jean shorts. I still kind of don't know what I'm doing with Levi's. I know that there are people that like, that's what they do. Like if you go to Rose Bowl flea market, you will find vendors that only do Levi's jeans. They will just have piles and piles and piles and piles of Levi's jeans. And I just tend to let those stay with them. <laughs> I just, I don't, I don't know the cuts. I don't know the sizing. It's not something that I can speak to knowledgeably. I'm not really a Levi's wearer. So if you are a Levi's person, let me know down below. Are there any tricks? Are there certain styles that I should be looking out for? Start to educate me on that. Next up, oh, this was such a cool find. And I think that this was part of a two piece set. So this is this fabulous silk robe with a ruffle trim. This is from Yellow Lotus in Santa Monica, which I think was like a little boutique. And I believe this was part of a two piece set with a sarong. I was able to find a couple more on like Poshmark that had the other piece involved in it. Either way, this is just like a fabulous little robe. It is quite a small size. It is a size small and it is a true small, but there was absolutely positively not a chance that I was going to be leaving this beauty behind. It's, I mean, just for the sheer amount of silk used to make this alone, I was going to be picking this up. It is a beautiful little piece. You know, this is kind of like that, not quite as grand, but you know, you, you, you vision like the 1920s old robes that have the marabou trim and it kind of swan about in. This is kind of like that, but on a little bit more subdued plane. But either way, this was just such a cool piece. So I had this listed for about a month I wasn't sure how long this was gonna take. I mean, for all I knew, this was gonna be picked up by somebody who was going to like vacation and they were gonna use this as a swim cover up. But either way, I had this listed for $60 and I went back and forth with this one gal and ended up taking an offer for $40, which I was glad to take, right? And with a $1 cost of the bins, this brought my profit to $28.54. And this is 100% one of those if it's weird and well-made, I'm gonna pay attention to it kind of buys. Like I've never heard of this brand before. I've never seen anything like this before. 
So 100% I'm going to be like, my ears are gonna perk up when I see something like this. So I'm very excited to get this onto its new home. Next up, oh, this was, this was a great, so this is a bundle deal here. So the first piece here is this vintage Eileen West wrap dress. It's this beautiful like window pane textured cotton. I'm gonna see if I can zoom in on that so you can see the detail on this. It's got kind of a mutton sleeve. It reminds me a little bit of like Laura Ashley dresses from back in the day. It's got that great little shoulder pad that's not really a shoulder pad, it's just a ruffle of fabric to give it a little bit of body here. But it is in great shape. I gave it a nice bleach and a line dry. And guys, if you ever buy anything from me and it shows up really stiff, it's because I line dried it. I am a air dry queen. It is how I prefer to get my stuff. That's not your preferred like sensory thing when it comes to clothes. You can just put them in the dryer, but please don't use dryer sheets, guys. It's terrible for your clothing. I had a couple people talk when I first found this about Eileen West nightgowns, how they have a really good sell-through rate. And it's something that's not been on my radar. Now this was spelled A-I-L-E-E-N, and I believe the pajamas and stuff that you can find today are, are spelled Eileen with an E versus an A. So, Keep your eyes out. Apparently they sell more in the bread and butter territory that in that $30 range, but people search for them in the same way that they search for vintage Laura Ashley. So that's one piece. I really don't know how to fold this, so I'm doing my best on that. And the other piece she picked up was this gorgeous vintage cashmere sweater from Dalton. This is like, as a vintage lover, this is one of those things that like makes your heart go pitter pat. This is a real classic basic. This was probably worn with like every dress back in the day. This is very much from the late 40s or early 50s. It's got that kind of cinched in waist silhouette with a little tie there. It's cashmere. It's kind of a, probably like a mid-weight cashmere and it is in like flawless condition. These are the kind of things that make me giggle to myself out loud in the bins. I have no shame whatsoever when I find something like this. And I knew that this was going to go fairly quick if you're just getting into vintage. This is the perfect kind of vintage piece to start with because it just goes with everything. You can throw this over a modern dress and have that kind of vintage moment. And having that little vintage touch without committing to like the full vintage ensemble. Vintage cashmere that's easily, what is that now, 70 years old that doesn't have a single moth hole? I love when I can find pieces like that. You know, when you know that they were stored correctly, maybe they were stored in a cedar closet. You know, I'm lucky enough to have a cedar closet in this house, so like when I find anything that's cashmere or like high-end wool or silk, it always goes straight into the cedar closet. But if you do not, you know, if you are sourcing and you like to pick up cashmere and silk and whatnot, if you don't have a cedar closet, which is totally normal for most houses built after 1940, I highly recommend if you have not already investing in some cedar pieces that go on hangers. You, you can buy them by like the 30 pack on Amazon for like 15 bucks. I'll link the, I always have a link to the ones that I use in my other closets here down below, but there are a billion different sets that you can buy, either little cedar balls for your drawers or the little rings that go on your hangers or little bars that you hang kind of periodically through your closet. Either way, if you are a reseller and you like to pick up any kind of like natural fiber, moths go after protein-based fibers, right? So they like wools and silks but they also go after cotton. So if you have any of those things in your closet and you live in a place that is moth prone, please do yourself a favor and spend the 10 or 15 bucks or whatever it is to get some cedar pieces to put in your closet and in your drawers to protect these garments. So I had these guys listed for one to two months and the bundle price, this came through as a full price bundle purchase. The bundle price was $141.10. Again, it sold as a full price and with $2 total cost from the bins, this brought my profit to $104.08. I hope she absolutely loves these. These are two like killer vintage pieces and um, literally like nothing makes me happier. And finally, this was a fun one. I've actually had this one for a while. This is a cute little dress from Johnny Was, another bins find. Now, this took a while to sell, but it is kind of an unusual dress silhouette. Like if you were looking for Johnny Was, and to be sure, any Johnny Was is gonna sell. 
you can feel comfortable paying up for any Johnny was, but if it's not, like what people really look for are number one, the kimonos, number two, the tunics that have really bright ornate embroidery all over them. This doesn't have nearly as much embroidery. These are little like cross stitch panels. It is a beautiful like printed silk. It's kind of like a drop waist tunic. So it is an unusual piece from Johnny Was. So I knew that this was gonna take a little bit longer to sell, but again, this is absolutely a brand that you can pay up for in confidence. So I did, this one did take six months to sell though. Again, I wasn't stressed about it. I knew that this would sell come warmer temperatures. Just a heads up. I, I love finding Johnny Was. It's, you know, one of those brands that everybody like, you know, their heart goes a little pitter pat when you find it in the bins. In fact, if, let me know which Johnny Was pieces you have found. I feel like most people who do this have at least found one or two pieces. So tell me what you found, how fast it sold, how much you got for it. I love hearing these stories anecdotally. I love celebrating your wins with you. And pretty much any Johnny Was find is going to be a win. So I have sold, I, I'm still holding out hope that at some point I find one of those burnout velvet kimonos that Johnny Was makes. That's kind of one of my grails. I've yet to find one. I found a couple tunics, a couple dresses, but never one of those kimonos. It's coming, I can feel it. So I bought this for a dollar at the bins. I did have it for six months and I had it listed for $65, which is about what I was seeing you know, in that $45 to $65 range for dresses like this. And I got an offer for $50, which I gladly accepted. With a $1 cost at the bins, this brought my profit to $39 even. So super happy to be getting this onto its new home. Beautiful piece. Johnny Was just never disappoints. It really doesn't. But guys, that is it. That is the shipment for today. This was kind of a crazy day. I had an average sale price. And when I say average sale price, I mean, an average cost of item of over $40. And I believe my average sale price is in the $50 range because I had that one bundle that was a cheap piecer. So that's an incredible weekend full of unusual pieces that sold. I always love sales days like this because it's so much fun stuff to kind of talk to you guys about. Not a whole lot of bread and butter this weekend is what I'm saying. But guys, thank you so much for hanging with me while I quite literally get my work done. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please consider leaving a like on this video don't forget to subscribe. I'd love to have you along this journey. And both of those things really help me out with YouTube. But guys, without further ado, have the most incredible weekend. Happy hunting. I hope you find some great treasures. If you do, let me know in the comments below. But happy hunting, and I will see you in the next one.